The Sattler Files. Welcome back to The Sattler Files and this is Law and Order. This is a segment where we discuss crimes, misdemeanours, uh, traffic and criminal cases with yeah. Inspector Neil Royal, retired. Welcome back, Neil. Morning, Despeen. Morning. We uh, do too. We do. We, we natter about things that we do. maybe have interest. And with your extensive knowledge of the legal system, mm-hmm. having been, how long were you in the police force before you retired as an inspector? Um, 42 years. So you do know what you're talking about, don't you? I've, I've had a dabble in it a bit, yeah. Just a bit, yes, yes I think. Yeah. As far as an expert witness, I think you'd do very well. And so nothing's pretty changed from when I went in in 1972 to when I came out in 2014, so it's just pretty well, pretty staid stuff. <laughs> keeping up was difficult, but uh, yeah. <coughs> keeping oh, up well, we do. Well, you do. You kept up and you're still keeping up. Now let's talk about what happens when you get into your car and your car has an alcohol interlock. Yeah, a, a good topic to start with because in October of this year it'll be legislated um, for um, and what will be then that, that, the, that when the courts convict on a drink driving offence... Um, they, they they convict. They don't give the 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 defendant the option. He but he has a chance to then apply to keep his driver's license, continue to drive after the fitting of an alcohol interlock system. So oh, okay. So, so it's it's not, he won't be given. I that. always thought that a DUI was a DUI, and it was mandatory that you lose your license. Uh, yep, it is a mandatory sentence, but now with the because when they, they first came up with this interlock idea, and it's not new to it's new to West Australia, but it's not new to the Eastern I've seen Seaboard. some taxis with an interlock with interlocks to protect the passengers oh, yeah, from yeah, a driver yeah, who yeah. may be intoxicated. Yep. Um, they first started doing this in a working party in two thousand and four. And I sat on the it's first 2016 one. 2016 now. Yeah, so it hadn't taken long. No, not long at so all. So I bet it's, a, it's going to be a Rolls Royce model, I'll bet, because um, mm. it's taken so long to – not not so much that it's taken so long to perfect it all. It's taken so long for everyone to agree what's going to happen. And I can recall in the earlier days when Alana McTiernan was, I think, the member, state government member for – or Armadale or Gosnells mm-hmm. or Kelmscott or somewhere or other, um, she was uh, quite... You just need to say Alana. Everyone knows who true, she is. True, it's true. She was quite voicey about the the interlock system and she agreed because that you shouldn't drive and you should be penalised for driving on the influence, et cetera, et cetera. But when it comes to an interlock, it said people won't be able to afford them and only the rich people will be able to afford them the poor people won't. So so how much do they cost? Well, at the time when we were doing the, the working party, um, the best price I heard was about 860 yeah. yeah. Why, okay. Way up eight hundred and sixty dollars <coughs> against the idea of not having a driver's license and not being able to work. You would try and find the money. Uh yeah. Because the eight hundred and sixty. Because when it comes to the the alcohol in the lock itself, um, the person who is applying for it will get to pay for everything. That is mm-hmm. to say, the provision of the unit, the installation of the unit, the maintenance of the unit, the downloading of the unit, and all that, because d- oh. data's been downloaded okay. and so forth and been encrypted and read and all the rest of it, um, all that sort of stuff they've got to pay for. So it was 860 in 2004 or 2005. God knows what it is now. Uh, I'd say you, you kiss, goodbye, kiss goodbye to a grand and a half, I'd suggest, I would say. at least. And the way it works. So w- <coughs> we, yeah, tell me how that works. Are you allowed to, is it a zero tolerance for alcohol? Like absolutely no yep, reading yep, whatsoever. Yep. Okay. And my understanding is what, what it was then was uh, if any detectable amount came on, you, so you get in the car, so you've, got, you've lost the licence, you've got the inter- interlock on your car, you get in it, before the car will start, you need to blow into the machine and if it registers, well, the car won't start. The car won't start. Yeah. So the arguments there were, oh, yeah, but what if you get someone else to come and blow into it for you? Which is a good question. Yeah, that is a good question. And so what it does... But then if you <coughs> stopped the car further down the road to go somewhere and then got back into your car... You've got to blow it again. you got to blow it in again. Yep. And so you have to take your friend with you all the way. So well, your friend might as well be driving if it comes to that. Exactly. Absolutely. And what it does is, not only do you have to blow it before you, the car will start initially, it will require you to blow it again whilst you're... Whilst you're driving along, so and it'll give you a time sequence. So it will require you to blow into it. If you don't do so within thirty seconds or forty seconds, the engine will stop. Really? Yep. So you, if you've got someone, what if you're on the freeway and you don't get off the lane, uh, out of the lane? Well, that, I don't know what they're going to do about that, but um, um, either the car the car will stop, or it will register the fact you failed to blow, um. or. Hazard lights will come on, right, or the okay. horn will sound, or whatever they're going to do. All of the above. All of yeah, the above. But Who in any know? event, it's designed so if you, had, if you had the sober passenger sitting beside you, 
Now, he can't just lean over and blow into it because you haven't got time to do it. It's, mm. it's there in front of the driver, so it's for him or her mm. to do so. So, as I said, in October, <clears throat> the legislation we promulgated and we shall see yeah. and follow with interest what actually happens with it. I think, I mean, I think it's a great idea. The, oh, only, yeah. the yeah. only thing that um, where they can cheat the system is that they can go and drive another vehicle, not their own. True. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. The, and that'll be part- only helps to save them from their own yeah. car. And that'll be part of the conditional licence because once upon, you should get, get extraordinary driver's licences yeah. after you were convicted to allow you to drive to and, to from, and from work, work. at certain places between hours of the day but and all the rest. But they're not easy to get. Extra- they're, they're making it much harder hard to get. Indeed. And they'll be a thing of the past shortly. Mm. You won't be able to get one at all. No. Um, and, you know, proving um, undue hardship and all the rest of it and so forth. That it, once upon a time, um, we used to, the police used to interview the applicants and make recommendations and so forth, and they go to the court and whatever. And, you know, and we would put stipulations on there and the courts would agree or not agree. And one of the things, of course, would be you have to carry your driver's licence at all time. Well, no, you, no, but no. Aren't, you, aren't you required by law to do that anyway if you're in the no, car? no. No. What? So if you don't have your driver's license, I thought you had to have your driver's license. Or am I watching too many American movies? Um, yep. Show us your registration yeah. and your insurance. You're, you're, yeah, exactly. But nope, not in this state. You, it is not compulsory carriage of driver's license. I pushed for that some years ago, um, and that which would stop a lot of the unlicensed driving and say, well, if you actually had to carry it with you yes. or attached to something in the car with your photo on it, it took yeah. long enough to get photographs on driver's license. Well, I have mine in my wallet at all times yeah, exactly. I'm, because I thought you had to. No. Nope. In this state, um, you have you must produce a license, your driver's license on the demand of the police within reasonable time frames. Oh, okay. So, for example, if you're on holidays from Kununurra and driving around down here, and the cops pull you up and ask for your license, oh, it's at home in my house in Kununurra. When you're going back there in six days' time, within seven days, you're to produce your driver's license at the Kununurra police station. Right. And that's what happens from there. So, oh, okay. So there's no such thing as compulsory carriage of driver's licenses here. And, and that's why, I, uh, in years gone by, I had occasion to speak to various people and, and talk about radio with your good husband and others who were stopped by police on what was called a driver's licence check. The police would pull it over and say, can I see your driver's licence, please? Which is mm. unlawful. They can't do that. Mm. Um, but you it's can't... happened to me. I know. And the cops were doing it. Mm. And I took on several of them and said, you actually can't stop someone for no reason. Or want to see his well, driver's then they license. wait. That's why they tail you for so long, waiting for you to not indicate when oh, you're no, changing that's fine. Like anything. Then you've got a reason. Yeah, they've got and a reason. And then the to follow on would be, oh, and while you're here, can I see your driver's license, please? But right. stop person for the sole purpose of just look at your driver's license. I'm not entitled to do that. No, so they and can't they, do they don't need stops. to. Well, they, they, well, they've got RBT, just drive along and stop them. I was just going to say, say they've got a booze yeah, bus that can this, do the same thing. Yeah, blow on this and now show me your driver's license because yeah. you've been stopped. Yeah. So, yes, all that sort of stuff there. So, no, you don't have to compulsory carry a driver's license. Um, but I would recommend you do carry a driver's license. Oh, I, oh, I agree. Oh, I agree. I never do, but. Don't, don't you? Have, no, I don't have to, do I? Well, because you don't have to. No, so, yeah. no, I'm still going to keep mine in my wallet. I'm sorry. Good you work. haven't turned me off. haven't turned me off. Well, invariably, if you go to a bank or something or other, and I've been to a bank in full uniform. And they've still asked for your credentials. They've asked to see my driver's licence. <laughs> and I said, well, um, um, I, I'm standing here in full bull, bull, blue uniform. And here's uniform. my police number. And, and it's written on me who yeah. I am. I'm quite identifiable. And one lady in the bank told me one time, she said, well, you could have stolen those clothes. Oh, my goodness. So I said, if you look out the window there, I probably stole Holy that marked Mary. police car as well as I yeah. came in. You know, yeah, uh, never exactly. mind. So you've got to carry a driver's licence. Okay. All righty. Now, moving along, yep. there's a, st- a story out overnight about um, a lot of violence on the streets. Yes. Somebody died, another coward's punch attack. And if people don't know what a coward's punch attack, Neil Royal will tell them, won't you, Neil? We had the conversation, did we not, last week about the we very did. same thing? Were we they, did, and it keeps happening. Yep, and the, you know, and the, 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 the criteria and the, the hue and cry from last week was compulsory sentencing of 20 years or 10 years mm. or 15 years mm. and how the magistrates and bench was, wasn't doing it um, from these one – someone got six months – for uh, an attack, or a punch, one punch attack. Um, so yes, and, and it always seems to happen in licensed premises. Yeah, get away. You know, away. Uh, one man was okay. There was a man stabbed to death at a house overnight. Yep. Um, but in a separate incident, there's another man fighting for his life with serious head injuries after his was the victim of what police believe was a coward's punch. Yep. Took place at the what the silver, silver sands, sands in, in Mandra. Mandra. Yep. Hmm. A lot of the onus is on the publican, isn't it? I mean, you've got to be so careful how much booze you're handing out to these people. God. Yep, and there are those there who don't need a lot to get aggro. 
Yeah. And they're not as though they're trawled down dribbly drunk. Not everybody's People, a happy no, drunk. That's right. And they they get aggro and someone upsets somebody else. And the easiest for the most ridiculously minor thing, like someone bosses past and bumps you and you spill a bit of your beer so you start World War Three. you know. Mm. Good God. Um, yep, so now this this person... Um, he may he, – he's in serious condition in hospital. The guy that got stabbed actually died, and they've got a yes. 17-year-old that they're holding for that. So oh, I don't God. know what the cause of that was. Yep, so the, the cops are busy with a, with, a, with a murder also down in Mandra where that uh, elderly man was missing for a month. They finally found him in the bush. Yep. So, yeah, it's um, it's busy times for the for the police at the minute. And uh, Little Perth isn't the sleepy, safe nah, place it used to nah, be, is it? No, nah, it isn't indeed. So um, – and the, the – They've even come out now with the, uh, the, all the pundits and so forth have been identifying where's the worst places to drive in, in Perth. Okay, as far you as, can tell me that. Where are the worst places well, to drive? Well, they reckon the analysis by the AMI. Is that Amy? Is, what, who Amy, are they? the insurance company. Oh, the insur- Amy, the insurance yep. company you yep. see on TV. Okay. That's it, that girl to play the flagellette. That That's one. it. That's and it. And you want to hit her over the head with it, but that'd be child abuse. So you couldn't do that. Um, Albany Highway is the top crash spot in, Albany, in Albany Cannington, Highway, is in it? In Cannington, it sure yeah. is. Okay. Um, and that's they measured from the um, for the year to August, so it's only eight months of the year. So um, unless they did their, their measurement from August last year to August this year, I don't know why you wouldn't do a calendar year oh. or do a fiscal or, year. Or, or a financial yeah, year, yeah, so, but they, exactly. So the, for the, um, in the year to August, 76 crashes on Albany Highway, Cannington. Goodness me. Um, Nicholson Road, Canning Vale. Jumped into fourth position, uh, from fourth rather to second, because there's 63 crashes out there in the same period. I'm just looking at my notes here. This is amazing. Yeah, and then, a lot, we, isn't it? then we move on to Joondalup, yep. Drive in Joondalup. Yep. Well, were there 54 crashes there, Great Eastern Highway in Midland and Scarborough Beach Road. I mean, you can yeah, argue Park. the fact that these are very busy thoroughfares. Yeah, they are. So <laughs> a lot of traffic um, is going to obviously. Increase the risk that yep. things bad yep. things are going to happen. It's yep. not a little side street where hardly anyone goes. No. So the more, as you say, the, the the busier it gets, and the more dense the, tra- the cars become, the more chance you have of someone running into you or oh, shunting people, you or whatever it is. You know, on a busy street at the end of the day or the beginning of the day, people lose concentration. They're not constant. You know, they could be texting. They could be doing anything. Yep. And as a matter of fact, they in the same survey, they uh, the Amy. Uh, surveyed what four? Are they four, surveyed four thousand and ninety drivers. Um, it's not a lot. I don't really get this. Why would you not survey five thousand? Four thousand and nine. Or four thousand. Well, they, they probably sent out <laughs> five thousand and, and only a, got so many that's responses. True. That's true. And that's something. The, the four thousand of the four thousand and ninety around Australia. That is. So the motoring population of Australia took a huge interest in it. Four thousand <laughs> of a whole, all the drivers in Australia. All four thousand of them. <clears throat> One in four admitted to sending a text message or answering a call from their mobile phones whilst driving. Oh, no. Why am I not surprised? Not, as not still. And this is despite 85% of those surveyed believing that drivers should not use a mobile while driving, even if they're careful. But they still did. They still did. Yep. I mean, I <laughs> um, have got my GPS, obviously the GPS thing, when I'm looking for somewhere to, yep. where, to get to a place, <clears throat> I have Google Maps, whatever. Yep. But it's got a speaker, so I don't have to yep. touch it. Once I come out of the driveway... That sits there and it talks me through. I don't even look at it. Is Isn't it that, that bloke Pettigrew doing the voice over or somebody else? No, it's a woman's voice. Oh, yeah. At the next roundabout. Yeah. Turn, that one. That yes. one. At the third, yes. That's the one. Um, uh, interestingly enough, on a talkback radio program, which runs every week, that I used to be on once upon a time with your good husband. With Howard. Um, um the fellow who's doing it for the police now got himself taken to task by the RAC and lots of others um, for dishing out what I believe to be incorrect information to drivers about the use of their mobile phones. And that, what he said on air was, which attracted the attention, was because they were they were they were banging on about the fact they went into the city block and they got ninety five people in sixty five minutes or sixty five mm. people in ninety five minutes mm-hmm. on their mobile phones in the CBD. Right. Um, and he, the police officer said, and of course you realise if you touch your mobile phone whilst driving, um, you create an offence and you'll get a ticket. Yeah. Well, this is wrong. So you, you can touch it. Well, you are. T- what the, the offence is quite clear. It, it entails when the the device is in your hand. 
That's the offence. Mm-hmm. Handheld mobile phone. Mm. So, so if it's in a cradle, you're entitled to push that button push to the answer. Push button to accept. That's right. If it's sitting on the on the on the seat beside you, you're entitled to push it to turn it on or where it is. If it's mm. sitting in your pocket, you can push it to turn it on mm. and push it to turn it off. So for him to say the offence is if you touch it while you're driving, you're going to get a ticket. Well, let's. Incorrect. Everyone's going to go. Well, what are you? What are you allowed to do? Yeah. What, what's uh, so? What's uh, the penalty? What's the penalty for texting while driving? Same as using the phone. Two fifty and four demerit points. <sighs> That's not enough. Well, it's not it much to, of a deterrent, I don't think. It used to be a hundred and one, hundred points, hundred dollars, dollars and one point. Then they doubled and a half that. So, um, yes, I was asked by. Uh, a, a You've been asked to comment on this in other media forums. So you are hot on the fact that uh, the, the fines need to be increased. The penalty should be tougher. Absolutely, and it's I do. It's got to be a deterrent, doesn't it? Absolutely, and I would liken the and uh, compare the dangers to. Um, using your mobile phone whilst driving is more dangerous than not wearing your seatbelt. I would say so. Um, if you're not wearing your seatbelt and you hit someone, you'd probably get hurt. But using your mobile phone and you hit someone, you might... You could wipe out That's a whole right, car half a dozen. Of, yeah, Exactly could. right. So as long as, as yourself as well. So why not, if the penalty for not wearing your seatbelt is 500 bucks, mm-hmm. and the penalty for using mobile phone is 250 and 4 okay, up the ante to 505. 500 bucks for using your phone and 5 points, and then guess what else? Give What's us the that? phone for a week. Oh, seize the phone. the phone. Seize the phone for a week and put it in property at police station. After seven days, come and claim it back. Oh, that that would be torture for a lot of people. Oh, I know. Could you imagine the excuses and the and the outcry? I can't do business. I can't you call my children. Can't I can't call my children. I can't order pizza. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, my, I don't know about you, but most homes don't even have a landline true. anymore. It is true. Um, and so if that is the cause of the problem, let's remove the cause. Yes. The person's, you know, they're going to be, oh, gee, 500 bucks, five points, oh, wow. I won't uh, do it. And gives the phone while you're there. Yeah. Uh, twofold. Firstly, uh, or the, it removes the, the device that caused the problem. If someone can't control themselves or discipline themselves enough not to answer it when they're driving, mm-hmm. either turned off when you get in your car Turn or put it off. in the boot or something, yeah, I don't know. put it on mute. <clears throat> Whatever. But then you're not yeah, distracted. Exactly. Um, and if you, if you push the button... Don't have, some phones have a device where you push the button that says I'm driving at the yeah, minute and it whatever. Does. I'm and in so, a meeting, I'm busy, exactly. call me later. So yeah, it's, you can do that. You can push the button and hit that. Yeah, it still requires you to look down to actually do True. that. And that's fine because you, you can look down to change channels on your on your. No, I just ignore the calls and wait till I'm I'm not driving any longer and then return them. I'm scared. <laughs> I'm a very very lawful driver. Well, you should be too. It's commendable. But when you consider all the things that are there to distract you for a start, and we'll just take taxi drivers for a start. Mm. They got that many machines and devices hanging oh, off their dashboard. Yes. They're forever pushing buttons they, going they beep, 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 while they're yeah, driving along. They are. Looking um, for the next job, <clears throat> yeah, lining yeah. it all up. And when you consider that uh, each time they're doing that, they're not looking where they're going, they're doing yeah. this and doing something else. And uh, if there's not something that not let that flash on the radio, you can change radio channels mm. and you can do this and mm. put in a CD. I suppose and that's true. You, do, you can put a stuff. CD in and you and, can change <clears> stations. And when it comes to looking in your rear vision mirror, all the best driving instructors would say you should be looking in your rear vision mirror on average about once every nine seconds. So, and you and you conscious, you probably yeah. subconsciously are doing that. I look, at, I look that. at my side mirror a lot. Whichever one doesn't matter. Well, it doesn't matter. It's the same. Yeah, just looking. Yeah, because you should be aware of what's going on around you. Yep. <clears throat> and the fact that looking away and looking, people say, "Well, you're taking your eyes off the road to look in the mirror," but it's you know a blink, and it, it, is, it blink. is just up and down and whatever it is. But um, well, when I it think- comes to changing CDs and so forth in your machine, where you up, you drop. The wiggle's on the floor, so you need to get them back again. So you lean down the floor and you've got your head out of the dashboard. Then you've got problems. You have a big problem then. Then you've you got do. problems. That's definitely inattention. But if it shuts a kid up and yelling and screaming, oh, get, yes. out, get out of there and plug it back in again. And plug it back in as quickly as you can. Now, look, oh, speaking still about cars and the police, there was a high-speed pursuit in the last over the last couple of days yeah. which ended tragically for an innocent couple in their vehicle. Yeah, that's terrible. Absolutely. You, I know they, they aborted the the chase before the accident happened. Yep. But I mean, how unlucky would you be? Wrong time, wrong place. Absolutely, and the the police be inconsolable because you know the, I think there's a 15 year old kid involved driving the car. The fif- that, yeah, the 15 year old um, was driving. And I, again, I got this word alleged uh, come up again. Alleged uh, stolen vehicle. Yeah. Well, I, the news said the other night that uh, um, some people allegedly killed. By a person in a stolen vehicle. No, no, no. They were certainly killed were, by alleged what, stolen vehicle. Al- so yes, the vehicle yeah, that was get alleged. Right, yes, so, yes, no, no. no. Um, 
Um, and There's no question. The, unfortunately, the couple did die. There was no question that's about terrible. that. That's terrible, and it is. And, you know, and that's what I'm saying. You know, when you're talking about looking in your rearview mirror and being aware of your surroundings when you're driving, I'm not saying that there's any fault with the with the deceased, but that is why you've got to be a defensive when oh, you're you driving. Really you really have to stay out of the yep. way of cars. Uh, you of need cars. to be ultra aware of your surroundings all the time. You really. Well, do. I've had a couple of. Brushes on Leach Highway with um, speeding cars that are, and erratic driving, which have yep. really, you know, I've like changed lanes, slowed down, done anything I could to avoid that yep. car so yep. that it gets out of my way. Yep, and you need to. And, it's, and you, then you say, "Where are the police when you need them?" Now, why isn't there a cop car here? Hey, I know, I know. Don't get me started on that. <laughs> um, but it, it, the, 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 they're hiding to nothing. The police, when it comes to these sorts of things, they 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 are obliged to. Um, apprehend felons and so forth and uh, maintain law and order and protect the public and the rest of it. Um, and so the situations come where, depending on the gravity of the situation, some people do need to be stopped. Yeah. And they do need to be stopped. And those who, who decide they don't want to stop for whatever reason just just um, promotes further thought, well, what has this person actually done? What, yeah. Why won't he stop? Yeah, Is he, exactly. It's not his, just because he wasn't, had, he, had his arm out the window, a portion of body protruding. No, no, uh, he's done something different. So, because he's about trying to evade exactly, us, so there's got to exactly. be something else happening yeah, and here. You, and you, they wouldn't have realised it was a kid in the car. Because the, the guidelines for pursuits are very, very strict. The emergency driving policy and the, the urgent duty driving, which I had a hand in writing, um, were very, very specific and they are dictatorial. For example, <coughs> if the police became aware that a child was driving that car, <coughs> excuse me, voice yeah, going now. No, no, no. <coughs> if the police became aware that a child was driving the car, they do risk management all the time on the radio to the the, the mm. um, chase controller. It's not just up to the no, to the two policemen got, in the car. They've got to say where they are, how fast they're going, the road conditions, the weather conditions, the traffic conditions, um, what the person's being pursued for, what he's actually doing, their time and place. At where I'm at Smith Street going south on whatever it is. His speed is so far, my speed is so far. And by this point. With all that toing and froing, they would have realised that it's a stolen vehicle. Yep, absolutely. The car's registered as a stolen vehicle, well, and they, so that's for a start, that's a, a, a reason yep. to pursue. And that's what they would they would then relay that to VKI. This is what we've got, and they will then grant them a priority or not, mm. and say yes, you can pursue it, whatever mm. it is. If it comes to pass it, and we think the kid is there's someone there about fifteen years of age, they abort the pursuit. They would be told abort the pursuit. Yeah. Um, and if they become aware of it, and if, if anyone becomes aware of it, say, for example, they're pursuing and they don't know, and somebody else in another police car sees them go past and says, it's only a kid driving that, that person would indicate and direct them to abort the pursuit right. as well. So anybody can abort right. uh, if it becomes more inherently dangerous well, to... Well, they did the right thing. They aborted... They did too. They did. But he they, went on. But he went on. Yep. Exactly. Because he said, oh, I've, I've dodged the coppers now, and he'd be thinking, well... Oh, I'm, this, this I'm pro- right. Well, perhaps there's three more coming the other way. I better mm. get out of here and do this, mm. there, and and the ultimate. He didn't pay any price yet, but the other two have played the no, ultimate. No, it's cruel. It is cruel and, and horrible. Um, I don't know if you knew because you probably weren't on the freeway at Mount Henry Bridge yesterday with the truck that jackknifed and caused huge delays. Would do, wouldn't it? It did indeed. The interesting thing was that it was all over social media. That's the interesting thing about the cars and the cameras. Yep. People were taking photos oh, oh. of the situation. And I'm thinking, are you mad? <laughs> are you completely insane? You're opening yourself up to the whole thing that you may be prosecuted for taking that photo. Absolutely. What, was he, what, what did his truck have on board? I don't actually. To be honest, I don't know. It made a big mess anyway, and yeah. um, it took an hour, over an hour to clean, get clear the truck and get the traffic. But it was it was banked up for miles. And you've got to wonder, <coughs> truck drivers are professional drivers, of course. Yes. Um, what ha- and jackknifing a truck is not the easiest thing to do. I was going to say, don't you have to be going at great speed? Well, no, something's got to happen to cause the the trailer to take over. Well, maybe from the, he had to evade exactly. another car. Someone's probably cut him off or something or other, yeah. or he jumped on the anchors and then. Well, that's another lesson. Be very yeah. careful when passing heavy vehicles. Well, usually when you're driving your motor car and it goes all dark and you look in the mirror, it's because someone in a Mack truck is right behind you so far, it's blocked out the sun. And they, and if you're one kilometre under the speed yes, limit, they're you know. not happy. They'll let you know. They <coughs> tailgate you. Yes, they do. some do tend to try to intimidate to a certain degree. Oh, they do. Um, and they do. It's the old power-weight ratio. Oh, mine's bigger than yours. Yeah, I'm bigger than you. And here we go. Mm. <laughs> so something... Um, 
catastrophic as happened for this driver to jackknife his in a straight line on the freeway. Yeah. Something's happened. On the bridge. Yep, something's happened. Yeah, definitely. Well, on that note... We uh, we might finish for did today. Did we give it a hiding again today? Did we, we gave everything a hiding we today. We touched on a few we things did. here. And we uh, like to keep up. I, I'm, as always, I've learnt so many things, so I don't have to stress out about taking my driver's licence everywhere I go. Good girl. Neither good. <laughs> Just need to prove who you are. Just Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Neil Royal, thank you so much for joining us. You've been listening to Law & Order on the Sattler Files. This is the Sattler Files.